Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sipaha. Today I'll discuss some very important contemporary and a very crucial topic that is some of the important provisions of protection of child from sexual abuse, popularly known as POCSO Act. This is part one. In this, I'm going to discuss only the objective and duties of police and punishment. Later on, this is again will be a series and later on I'll discuss some other important provisions of POCSO Act. So let's start with the objective of POCSO Act. There are rampant increase in the sexual abuse, especially uh, child abuse. So in order to effectively address the heinous crime of sexual abuse and sexual exploitation of children, through less ambiguous and more stringent legal provision, the Ministry of Women and Child Development campaigned the introduction of Protection of Child from Sexual Abuse, that is POCSO Act, in 2012. The framing of the Act seeks to put children first by making it easy to use by including mechanism for child-friendly reporting, recording of evidence, investigation, and speedy trial of offense through designated special courts. Let's discuss some of the salient features of the act. First of all, this act defines child. That means anyone who is below the age of 18 years is considered as a child. And also regard the best interest and well-being of the child as being of paramount importance at every stage. To ensure healthy physical, emotional, intellectual and social development of the child. It also, also defined various forms of sexual abuse, which includes penetrative and non-penetrative assault. It also includes sexual harassment and pornography and deems a sexual assault to be aggravated under certain circumstances, such as when the abused child is mentally ill or when the abuse is committed by a person in position of trust or authority vis-a-vis -vis the child, like a family member, police officer, teacher, doctors, and so on. Further, people who traffic ch children for sexual purpose are also punishable under the provision related to abetment of the act. The act prescribes stringent punishment graded as per the gravity of the offense, with a maximum term of rigorous punishment, imprisonment of life, and even death in the amendment 2019, and fine. First of all, let's discuss the duties of police because they are the first person who are there for the protection and safety of children other than the parents. But if the parents are the offender, then it is the duty of the police to take the cognizance. So, as per Rule 42 of the Act, when police receive information of an offence, now listen properly. If police receive information of the offence, offence of three types, first, either if it is committed or it is attempted or likely to be committed, it is the duty of the police officer to first register an FIR then provide a copy of a FIR to the complainant. Then, if a child is in a medical emergency, arrange the same immediately without delay. Then, take the child to the hospital accompanied by a parent or any person the child trusted. Ensure the sample collection for forensic examination. Then, inform the child and his parents about the support person, a legal advice, and right to be rep, uh, represented by a lawyer. Some other duties of the police. As per Rule 4.3, when child is exploited, either by a person in the family or shared household or in shelter home and is found out, the child is without parental support or without home. Then the special juvenile police unit popularly known as SJPU or police, will produce the child before the Child Welfare Committee within 24 hours with reason in writing that the child is in the need of care and protection and request for the detailed assessment by the Child Welfare Committee. 
after making a detailed assessment and as per rule 47 the child welfare committee will provide a support person to the child next duty of police are as per rule 49 the police shall within 24 hours inform the special court of the support person provided to the child in writing secondly as per rule 411 the police shall inform the parents support person guardian as the case may be about the development of the case arrest of the accused and details of various application filed other duties as per rule 412 the police shall inform the parents or support person or guardian some of the following thing first availability of medical services then procedural step involved in criminal prosecution then availability of victim compensation then arrest of the offender then filing of charge against the offender next dates of court proceeding then bail or release of the offender then rendering of verdict and sentence imposed on an offender now punishment in this particular slide i will explain some of the offenses mentioned under this act and punishment as per 2012 act and also amendment in 2019 so first type of offense is penetrative sexual assault on a child for that in 2012 the punishment was minimum seven years and maximum life imprisonment and fine whereas in 2019 now the minimum is 20 years and maximum is life imprisonment here life imprisonment means imprisonment for the remainder of natural life of that person and also fine second is aggravated penetrative sexual assault for that in 2012 punishment was minimum 10 years which may extend to life imprisonment and fine whereas now the minimum is rigorous imprisonment for 20 years that is minimum and maximum is death penalty and also the imprisonment for life here again imprisonment imprisonment means for the remainder of natural life and also fine third is sexual assault here sexual assault means sexual contact without penetration for which the punishment is three years which may extend to five years and fine and there is no amendment fourth aggravated sexual assault by a person in authority for that punishment is minimum of five years and maximum of seven years and fine no changes in 2019 then fifth is sexual harassment of the child here punishment is three years and fine and no changes in 2019 six is use of child for pornography purpose here in section 14 subsection 1 the punishment is five years and fine and in the event of subsequent conviction it is seven years and fine and in 2009 although subsection of 14 1 is same but there has been a insert of section 14 2 that means in 14 1 is same and in 14 2 it has been stated that whoever using a child or children for pornography purpose under subsection 1 of section 14 commits an offense referred to in section 3 or section 5 or section 7 section 9 by directly participating in such pornographic act shall be punished for the said offense also under section 4 6 8 and 10 respectively in addition to the punishment providing in subsection 1 that means again in subsection 2 of section 14 the extension of punishment is if there is any offense under section 3 5 7 and 9 apart from section 13 then there will be an addition of the punishment under section 6 4 8 and 10 respectively then uh, seven type of punishment uh, of offense is store or possesses pornography material in any form involving 
a child for commercial purpose. That means if any person is having a pornographic material that too, that too for the commercial purpose. Initially in 2012, the punishment was three years and fine. But in 2019, in the first conviction, it will be three years and which may extend to five years or with fine or with both. And in the event of second or subsequent conviction, the imprisonment will be minimum of five years, which may extend to seven years and he will also be liable to fine. So here's the end of uh, some of the important provision of uh, POXO Act. This is part one. And in part two, I'll explain some of the other important provision of POXO Act. Hope you like my video. And if you like it, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel. You may also visit to my website that is priyasapaha.com for the detailed notes. And follow me on FB page and Instagram as LawCollyQ and Twitter at Dr. Priya Sipaha. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.